This is going to be part of this parallel series looking at some of these basic AutoCAD skills and SketchUp skills and other skills regarding drafting. And I'm going to point out there will not be a definite one-to-one, -one, but I'm going to try to keep some dual path thing going here. And so I'll let you know that I do most of these from home because the software is there. I've got what you've got. I've got to download into um, from from AutoCAD, so I've got AutoCAD, and, and there'll be some differences because I do not have AutoCAD 2010, but I have Civil 3D 2010, which I can make be make to mimic AutoCAD. Some of the things that won't be the same at home is I'm going to right here do a right click. My right click stuff will not be the same. Remember, we're doing a lot of stuff on the mouse, but my hold the shift key right click will. And you'll notice I will generally not use, for the most part, in an introductory drafting class, the ribbon. I will be using key ins and toolbars, the reason being we kind of save the ribbon for these additional things that you work with in AutoCAD. But you will be, it will be perfectly great to use the ribbon, um, and the ribbon interface has caught on in a number of different software, starting, of course, with Microsoft Windows coming into Microsoft. Um, coming into AutoCAD, and I know Esri, uh, which is some of you using uh, Marco's class, uh, Win stuff, using uh, Esri, which is really one of the big players in geographic information systems. Um, you use their software, and it went ribbon as well. So the ribbon is definitely not going away. I'm not dismissive of it, but it's just something that, as a rule, I won't be using uh, much. Uh, because of the fact that we save it for something else. But what I will be using a lot is these standard toolbars. And one of the first things you want to remember in AutoCAD is to never lose the last of your toolbars. But when you do, you can type in minus toolbar down at the command prompt and you say you never want to do all you want to use the toolbar, which is the draw toolbar, and then you show it, and that brings this toolbar up on the left. Then a great important skill is to right click on any toolbar, brings up another set of toolbars, and I'm going to use the modify toolbar off on the right. Right click on any toolbar, brings up a set of toolbars. You've got the layers, which we'll talk about, and you can place that someplace. We usually place that up near the top and right click on any toolbar. I think there was a standard toolbar, not standards. That's one there. We use that one because of the match properties. You can be adding and subtracting all kinds of toolbars. Remember for me, and for the most part, in a lot of these programs along the bottom here, you wanted to right click on something like this, sorry, and you wanted to not use the icons, you wanted to right click and use the words. These have to do with object snaps and you want them for the most part to be off. I will run around class and let you know that if these are not that way, I will shift them back on you for quite a while here until you can develop the habit of understanding how they work and for the most part, um, it's gonna make you more efficient in the the basic and important ways of using drafting if these things are not on until you start getting into the intuition of how things grab. All right, you were going to be looking at this layering thing a little bit earlier than not. Remember, you all have all kinds of, you're going to use a particular starting file new, and I'm not going to do that at home. I don't think I can. File new, it's going to take me out to some odd spot, and these are set up to go to a particular spot. I'm going to leave that here for now, but you're going to want to make sure that you grab the right decimal template. All right, so what we want to cover right now is basically without the automatic stuff there, we want to basically deal with coordinate systems. And what I'm going to introduce you to here is the fact that you should take out your right hand right now and point it in the direction of what you're going to call X. And then point your thumb in the direction of what you're going to call Z or out of the board and Y, Z, in other words, up. Not up in terms of an XY plane, but up in terms of the air. Y is going to be what your expression finger, the middle finger, does if you kink your hand. And we'll see some videos. And you should get that in your hand with your right, and with your right hand. 
and you're not watching me speak with my hands as usual, but you point your finger in the direction of X, your thumb goes in the direction of Z, and if you kink your hand, Y is in the direction of your expression finger. So that's a key thing. It's called uh, and a right-hand coordinate system. You're going to be doing that. If you're dealing in mapping, like many of you are with azimuths, particularly the renewable people, you're going to be doing it with your left hand. We're going to point your pointer finger in the north direction. Z is going to be, or up in the air, is going to be your thumb. And then as you kink your left hand, the easting, more or less, is going to be um, where your expression finger is. All right, how do we go about drafting a line in a exact direction? Well, there are two ways, or from between points, I'm sorry. There are two ways. There is relative and there is absolute. And then there's going to be basically two ways, if you would, when we start talking about distances and angles. So we're looking at both Cartesian coordinate systems when we break things into x, y, and z. Many of you might think of that as the math coordinate system. And then spherical coordinate systems, which I would call a more natural system. And that is things are measured by distance, angle, left and right, and angle up and down. Those are called spherical coordinates. There are other coordinate systems, but those two get you pretty far. The third coordinate system that I think you all should be aware of at very least will be a, something called a cylindrical. Um, and so we won't deal with that, but we'll at least talk about it. All right, how do you draft from a known point given an absolute point to another known point? Well, you have this ability to go here to line, but I would start to recommend that you use your right click on your mouse or at home I'm just going to say L spacebar and it can say the, the first point. Now you don't necessarily want to just click on the screen you want to actually give it the first point and what you know is if you just give it a something comma something and then you want to add the third comma it gives you an absolute place on the on the plane. So I'm going to tell it 10 comma 10 comma 10. And believe it or not, that put that absolutely on an infinitely infinite, infinitely precise plane at the coordinates 10, 10, 10. It's now asking me for my next point, so I'm going to now tell it 20, 20, 20. Realize I've thrown in that third Z dimension. We won't be doing that a lot in this class, but I want to show you that AutoCAD does, in fact, deal in 3D from day one. I will also let you know you can drop off that last comma value, but the habit of leaving it with a comma zero is a habit you should put in your brain now, so go ahead and do it anyway. If I hit that here, I hit it spacebar, again a double return, you'll see that I'll use spacebar a lot, escape, 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 Z space, E space, you can see that line. That line, when you look at it, there is no way for you to tell whether it is in 2D or 3D. Later on, you'll see there's commands like list and the like. All right, I'm going to try again now. I'm going to say L. I can pick a particular spot, and now I don't even know where I went, where that spot is. I just clicked in space, and we're not going to do a lot of that. And if I want to go relative from my last point, I use the symbol for last point. And of all symbols, it is the at symbol. I say at, and then I say 10, 10, 0. And that will draw 10 in the x direction, 10 in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction from that last point. And you see there it is. Escape, 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 z space, e space, or usually double click middle mouse will do it for you. You looking at these, they look parallel, they look like they're parallel lines, but realize they are not because you drafted this one in Z. So we won't be doing a lot of that. So the difference between importing absolute, if AutoCAD is asking for an input and you put nothing, it's going to put an absolute position. If you put at, it puts a relative position. And the commas in between tell it it is going in terms of coordinate Cartesians X Y and Z now we get to what this program has that SketchUp doesn't have immediately and that is kind of a more important way to put coordinates in particularly relative coordinates 
and that is the spherical coordinate system. And the spherical coordinate system, instead of speaking in X, Y, and Z, you speak in distance, angle from X, and angle up from the plane. Distance, angle from the X using your right hand, and angle up from the plane. That is usually defined as your XY ground plane. And so how do you do that? Well, once again, you click there, you click a point, and now you say at, and I'll use 45 degrees angle, I'm sorry, 45 I'll use 30, I'm sorry, angle 45. Escape, 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 Z space, E space. And you see that line was put up at 45 degrees. All right. And I'll do it again. Now I'll do line and I'll go shift right click, end point. Shift right click, end point. I will say now at 10 angle. 180. Remember, zero is at the x direction. With your right hand, you're going 180 degrees a turn and around it, and you do that, and it just drafted that line. All right. Now, the first exhibits, you, you really want to be able to do things by going at maybe two angle zero, two angle 90, two angle 180. However, the ortho snap here allows you to do it a little bit quicker. So we're going to turn that on to introduce you to one of these snaps, eventually the polar as well. We'll turn on the, actually the polar here, and we'll do it the same way now. We'll click on line. We will click on our starting point and then move our mouse in the general direction that we want to go. Take our hand off the mouse and tell that this key in the direction, the distance, five. Now move our mouse in the general direction we want to go. Take your hand off the mouse and say 10. Move your mouse in the general direction you want to go until it locks in. Take your hand off the mouse and say the distance. So you realize those tools are there and that was an occasion where you turn some of these grid, these, these snaps they're called or these kind of toggles I call them along the bottom on and off. Once again click on it when you get you notice because of a set of settings it's only going to grab right when the pull it's not going to grab because the polar isn't on as soon as the polar is clicked on and you'll see it will grab as you get close. There is a set of settings we'll see for polar snaps that would let you grab to not just zero maybe you would be grabbing to where the sun for all renewable people, um, where the sun is. Maybe you would want to go directly to the latitude 45, or might you want to be designing down to the, uh, the, the, the low sun angle, 45 minus, 45, I'm sorry, uh, in Wausau. It's your latitude is where the middle spot of where the sun is at solar noon on the equinox. And then plus or minus the 23 and a half degrees that the Earth slides on its axis. We'll talk about that in class. So you might want to change those settings. We'll look at how those polar settings are set. So how do you do it? If you want to just kind of do a little quicker, you click, you get the mouse in the general direction where you want to go. You take your hand off the mouse is a key thing. You hit five, it takes you there. Same thing, general direction, hand off the mouse, hit four, and that gets you pretty far. So for review, if you do not put any when AutoCAD is asking for a point and you put nothing in terms of a prefix, it takes it as an absolute location. If you put at, it means from the last point. If you use commas in between your inputs, it is giving it as Cartesian, Cartesian X, Y, and Z. If you use a less than symbol between your angles, and you'll see the third angle is possible as well, it is telling you it's relative. It's, it's, it's going to be a polar system or a spherical system. And usually there's not a whole lot of point doing that in terms of an absolute way, but that's possible as well. All right. Hope you watched it. I'll have you mark it up. Thanks for listening.